Hello all and welcome to Wild Crochet Designs. My name is Mary and in today's tutorial we are making these gorgeous Christmas chains that you see right here. Link after link after link after link and there you go. Today you're going to work on these two right here and then I'll get you to head off on your own and you can do as many links as you like. All right, now I've done all together, once I uh, attach this to the piece with the red, I need to attach a red to it, and you'll work that out at the end of this tutorial, what I mean. I will have uh, 25 linked chains once these are all complete. All right, but you can do as many as you like, make it as long as you like or as short as you like. But with the 25 linked chains, I'm just going to let you know that I used between 12 grams and 15 grams roughly of five different colors no I tell a lie these two here I only used about six grams each because I didn't make as many of them but these colors here I used about 12 grams each so they don't take a lot to create there's not much that they that it uses yet and let me show you the actual yarn itself I love the red don't you know <laughs> For those of you who don't know me, red is my favourite colour. You can't see it, but let me get you a nice close-up. I think you can. See the little tinsel in it? Oh, the sparkle. I love the look. Personally, it did make me itch all the way through <laughs> this tutorial, and I was constantly stop-starting. You may notice that without it, with, um, within the tutorial. But that's just me, and I do get itchy with acrylic yarn anyway. So there you go. All right. Too much information there. Now, this is a Jolly Joy chain yarn, 50 grams worth. Uh, I purchased this from our larger chain here in Australia, Spotlight. So if you are here in Australia, you will find this yarn at Spotlight. Okay. And I think they've got between five and six colors. I can't remember. I think it's only five. Don't quote me on it. I'm sure they've got others. It does come in 110 meters, but we don't use it. As you can see, I've only used about... 12 grams per skein which wasn't much now it calls for a 4.5 needles i actually use a 4.5 millimeter hook uh, so they use the knitting needles there to uh, show you but i use a 4.5 millimeter hook you put you could probably get away with using a five i found the green was a little bit difficult to see when I was creating and that was my first piece. So I was a little bit disappointed there. So maybe you could even use a five millimeter hook and not the 4.5, but it doesn't matter either way. If you use a five, you will use more yarn, just heads up, yeah? All right, this is a great stash busting idea as well. You can make as many of these and as many different colors as you like and you can actually use them for other things other than Christmas. Easter, birthday parties, some sort of function that you're having wherever you are living or working. Yeah. All right. So that's that about the yarn. You will also need one stitch marker. If you are new to crochet, my suggestion would be to use a stitch marker. You'll need a pair of scissors and you will need a sewing needle to weave in those ends. Yeah. It's only two ends per um, link. Yeah, and I haven't even weaved in the last end on that one. But don't fuss too much with these ends. They will not come undone. They're literally hooked up on whatever you want to hook them up to. Okay, now if you keep your eyes peeled on our channel, uh, I do a lot of fun videos in between tutorials or, you know, maybe every seven or eight videos is a funny video these days. And you will actually see this particular chain set up in my craft room all right if you want to see them set up in the craft room over the next week or so I will be setting them up in a funny video doing that I like to do that sometimes and that's what I'll be doing so keep your eyes peeled for that I was going to do it in this particular video but time is of the essence today and I don't have time to do it so uh, these are the chains that you will be creating today now just to let you know heads up this was my color combination yeah Gold, white, green, red, silver. White, oh, I did it the other way in the tutorial. Sorry, let me try that again, all right? Silver, red, green, white, gold. Red, green, white, silver. Red, green, white, gold. Red, green, white, silver. Red, green, white, gold. Red, green, white, silver, and so on and so on and so on. All right, so that's it, guys. That's all I wanted to talk about right now. I'm going to let you head off creating your gorgeous, I don't know why I'm doing this, but it looks cute like this, <laughs> your gorgeous uh, chain link bunting. Good luck all. All righty, guys, we're going to start off by making a slip knot. Grab the tail end of your yarn, wrap it around your finger or once, 
and twice, holding it there and holding it down there. Grab your back loop, passing it halfway over your finger, hold it there. Grab the other loop, passing it all the way over your finger, pop your hook in the loop and give everything a tug. And what you should have is that, yeah? All right, we are going to make, firstly, chains. And a chain is yarn over your hook, pull a loop through, once, yarn over, twice, that's your two stitches, yarn over, three, four, five. All right, so you are making these chains until you get to 30. So that's five, let's bring that out a bit, and off we go, six, Twenty nine and thirty. All right, and what you have is that. All right, so let me bring that up for you. You can have a quick look, and your chains should be kind of like the way you're looking at them. They should look flat to you. There's a flat side, and then there's a bubbled side, and you want your flat side to be facing you. So that's a flat side of it, and just gently run your fingers. And I can see it's already twisted. Make sure that yours does not twist. So run your fingers along the flat side like that. Still holding onto your hook, run it along the flat. Your flat should be on your thumb. Flat and flat. When you get to here, let me bring a nice close up for you so you can see. That's the flat area of your chains. Grab your hook and just pop it in that first stitch. All right. Holding it there, and just grab the tail end of your yarn, give it a tug, and just pull everything through like that, and pull it through to the loop on your hook right there. And what you've done is you've closed it. Now, to make sure this is straight, pop it down and make sure that all of the flat side is facing you. Yeah, all of the flat side right there is facing you and your chain has not twisted. It's a bit hard to see with all the sparkles and I can see them sparkling as we speak. So it's a bit hard to see with the sparkles, but you want to work along the flat side of your chain. So what we're going to do first is chain one and just give it a bit of a tug, yeah? And in the same stitch you are in, you're ignoring the chain now, in the same stitch you are in, you are doing a single crochet. So right in that same stitch, pop your hook in Pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through both those loops on your hook. Now here's your little tail. And I'm thinking we can crochet over that tail a little bit, making sure your chains are still flat. You are going in the top loop. Let me move that chain, that tail for a minute. You are going in the top loop of every chain you come to. So in there, I'm going to pop the tail on and crochet over it. You don't need to. We're still going to weave that in anyway. And so there we go. You do your single crochet, pulling your loop through, yarn over, pull through two. And away you go. In fact, I won't crochet over the tail. So this way you can see what I'm doing. Okay. So top loop of your chain, pull a loop through, two loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through two. Top loop, pull through, yarn over, pull through two top loop, pull through, yarn over and pull through too. Before you go, I forgot to mention to pop your stitch marker in that very first single crochet that you did, which is right there. Now we've made one, you're counting these little V's, one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is on the hook. You can even see it there. They're little V's, yeah? One, two, three, four, five, all right? So there you go, that's really close, but I did want you to see the stitches. It's a little hard to see with this particular yarn, yeah? What I'm going to do is literally let you head off on your own and continue doing your single crochets in the round, yeah? All right, so single crochets in every chain you come to, every chain all the way, until you get to roughly around here somewhere. If you can get to the last stitch, you can find it right there, being careful not to include your slip stitch as a last stitch. So just get to that last stitch there, and I'll meet you there once you're done.
Alrighty guys, so where you should be now is at the end of this round and your work should lay flat once sitting straight. If it's all twisted, your chains are all twisted, then you need to take it undone, take undone the slip stitch, straighten it up and then slip stitch again. All right, but in the meantime, we are going to work on our very next round. But before we do, I'm actually on my 29th stitch. So what I'm going to do is pop my hook in that very last stitch and complete the last single crochet. All right, we're going to talk about count. We'll talk about that right now, not, not after. And what you need to do, and I'll grab my little um, sewing needle here to show you. You need to count these tiny little V's that you see here. It's a little bit hard to see, sorry guys, oh, that's better. See the little V's, one, two, three, four, and you need to have 30. All right, so go ahead and count yours. I counted mine off air. So go ahead and count yours. And once you have your count correct, you're going to slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker. So you pop your hook <laughs> in that tight stitch, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook, remove your stitch marker. All right, so from here, we're going to chain one, whoops, chain one, give it a tug and just skipping the chain and in the same stitch that you are in, which is right in there, you're going to do what we call a half double crochet and that's yarn over your hook. You're going to pop your hook right into the same stitch that you are in, pull a loop through and you have three loops on your hook. Yarn over, pull through all three loops on your hook and then you're going to pop your stitch marker in that same stitch that you just completed. Right there. All right, let's move the yarn out the way. It's in my way. <laughs> All right, um, now we're going to chain one. It might be a little bit too, that's better. Chain one. So chain one. And what you're going to do is you're going to do half double crochets across, but you're going to skip the first stitch you see in front of you and go into the second one. Let me move that thread out the way so you can't, don't get confused. So yarn over your hook, skip the first stitch that you see right there and jump straight into the very next stitch. So you skip that one and jump straight into that very next stitch and do your half double crochet. We'll do it again. I wasn't really facing you properly there. All right, so yarn over your hook, skip the first stitch. So you skip that first one, jump into the very next one, pop your hook in, pull your loop through like normal. You should have three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull through all three loops. So what you have is that little gap there, yeah? Chain one, yarn over your hook, skip that first stitch, and go into the very next one. So skip your first one. In fact, if you can see where you are there, yeah? Skipping that and going into the next, yeah? So you're here, skip one, jump into your very next one. Mine are a little tight, sorry guys. And do your half double crochet, yeah? Yarn over through all three. Chain one and so on. Skip one, go into your next. <laughs> Hopefully yours isn't as tight as mine. <laughs> and there you go. Chain one, skip and go into the very next stitch. All right, so there you go. That is what you're going to do all the way in the round. And when you get to the end, you should have one stitch remaining. All right, so chaining one, Half, um, try it again. Chain one, skip one, half double. Chain one, skip one, half double. Chain one, skip one, half double. All the way across, you should end up with one stitch left. All right, continue in that manner. Get to the end of the row right there and I shall meet you there once you're done. All righty guys, once again, we are at the end of this piece right here. And I have literally one more to do. I've chained one already. If you haven't chained your one at the end of your half double crochet there, then do that now. Then you skip that stitch and you slip stitch right into the stitch with your stitch marker, pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Remove that stitch marker. Yeah. Chain one, tighten it up. And now what we're going to do, once again, we're going to skip that chain. And in the same stitch we are in, we're going to put a single crochet. 
and you know that you did it in the first round pop your hook in pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through both those loops popping your stitch marker in like so this is a very easy round this one and that's your first single crochet there's your big space you're going to pop a single crochet around that chain your chain one space that is so pop your hook right around it pull a loop through two loops on your hook yarn over pull through both those loops easy and then into your half double crochet stitch yeah there's your half double so into that stitch pull a loop through two loops on your hook single crochet pull a loop through straight into the space single crochet it's super duper easy this round just making sure you're not skipping any half doubles from your previous round or any spaces from your previous round and that's it single in your half double stitch and single in your space easy 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 all right so single 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 all the way through get to your your last half double crochet get to that stitch right there and I'll meet you there once you're done Alrighty guys, I forgot to mention before that there were 15 half double crochets in that round and 15 chain spaces. So at the end of this round, you should have 30 single crochets again, which is what we started with. Now, if you did your single crochet in your last half double, don't forget you have the chain space before you slip stitch. So you need to put a single crochet in that chain space right there and then you slip stitch mm. <laughs> into the tight first stitch, pull a loop through, pull it through to the loop on your hook. Get excited, guys. This is your first chain, believe it or not, rip complete. Pull a loop through like so. And give your work a cut and pull it through real quickly, real quickly. I'm going to show you how to weave in this end. And I'll tell you why, because we're going to do the very next chain in a minute or I should say link, okay, because it's getting confusing with the actual chain of the stitching that we do here at uh, Crochet. All right, so there's a lot of the little tinsels coming out of this. I don't know if you can see this. It's really awkward. This was the very first thread that we had. Let me get a close-up. This was the very first thread we had, and that was actually we started crocheting over it. So what I'm going to do is just lift some threads not a lot just you're slip stitching through a little bit of these threads right here with your sewing needle and you're just pulling it through that's it you can go a little bit further if you like if you've already crocheted over it don't go too far yeah and then you're turning it back this way again and you're going back in the same direction that you came from but skipping the stitch and going through some other stitches okay probably best to check that it's not too visible in front you don't have to worry too much about that in this particular case okay these won't come undone so you only do um, two they won't come undone because they don't get moved they just stay up in the air yeah the only thing is we need to hide this tail now I refuse to use the modern stitch that I've been using lately because I don't like it you like that I don't like it <laughs> I don't like that modern stitch but in the, in the meantime this is where we um, cast off this was our last thread now all I usually do is I go through the top loop just the back of that top loop yeah the last stitch we created before we slip stitched and then I just pull that loop down like so and it hides everything and then what you do at the back is you just catch some stitches and you do exactly what you did with the base stitch yeah and you just pull it through like so I'm not too worried if you can see it because with all the tinsel and everything in it you can't tell whether you've gone through on the other side but you can check if you like you're welcome to check okay um, I'm just going to keep going straight through here sorry guys I am using my old camera for this part I haven't adjusted my framing to the new camera so it's a little bit odd <laughs> it's coming out very blue and very yucky so I do apologize in advance for that coloring there and that will happen for a little while and I'm hoping to adjust the frame eventually 
but it's one of those things where you've got to carve into the frame. It's not one of these modern frames, yeah? All right, so that's that. That's the first one done. Right now, real quickly, we're going to start the second one. But you actually need this ready when you are ready to do that second one, all right? So moving everything out the way for now. And once again, you're going to start that second one pretty much, that's too far out, sorry, pretty much the same way you started the green. So grabbing your tail end, wrap it around your finger once and twice, holding it there, holding it down there, pass that back loop halfway over, hold it, pass the other loop all the way over, pop your hook in, giving everything a tug. If I sound like I'm rushing, it's because you've already done this, so we're going to do it again, yeah? Chain 30, yarn over our hook, pull it through once, twice, three times, four, five, and off you go doing your 30, all right? So, six. Twenty-nine and thirty. All right, so there's our chains. This is where it can get a little tricky, all right? So grabbing your tail, passing it at the back, yeah? And just grab your last piece that you just did, making sure you've um, popped it on your fingers like that, and just straighten your thread like you did before, like that, yep. Yeah? And just popping it through, holding the straight part. So you haven't moved it, yeah? So you've straightened it, kept it nice and straight, popping your hook <laughs> through the tight stitch, the very, <laughs> the very tight stitch, yeah, and just grab your thread and pull that loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. And what you've done is you just have attached the very first um, link that you made. Now, forgetting all about that link, let it dangle and just chain one, tighten it up, single crochet in that same stitch that you are in. Guess what? You've done this row before. We're going to do it again, single in your first, second stitch, sorry. Whoops, don't forget, I did it again. Pop your stitch marker in that stitch like that, so you can find it at the end of the round. Now, if you are new to crochet, Seriously, I would advise to have some sort of stitch marker, safety pin, um, hair pin, uh, whatever. <laughs> whatever you've got in stock, you like that? Whatever, okay? So in you go, keep going in the round with your single crochet. Okay, the sun is out, so it's helping the lighting on the old camera. Yay, very exciting. <laughs> very exciting. Before it was terrible and now it's getting better. All right, so what I want you to do, I'm not going to let you sit here and watch me do this, single crochet in every stitch. And as you can see, I'm crocheting over this particular tail, not like I was doing before, crocheting over it. I'm going to let you head off on your own, single crochet into every stitch, get to your very last stitch. And as you're working, just maneuver your piece through, and oh, we can do it now. I'm not going to let you head off. We'll just do it now. <laughs> If anything, I'll pop it on fast in a minute. But what I want you to do is manoeuvre your piece around like that. And you can actually, it, it does it itself anyway. As you keep going, it kind of manoeuvres itself around your green. And if it doesn't, you just sort of like adjust it to suit. All right. So there you go. I might pop it on fast though, because we're going to be here forever otherwise. <laughs> We're going to be here forever. All right, so I'm not going to let you head off. I'm just going to pop this on fast and you can watch how I maneuver it. And you can actually slow it down if you want to see it. There's a special settings up the top on your um, YouTube channel there and you can slow it down to suit you. But in the meantime, off we go and I'm going to pop this on fast. So here we go, we're getting close to the end of that piece right there. I do have one more stitch left, which is right there. Okay, so you can count your stitches, make sure you have 30, yeah? 
And what you're going to do is just slip stitch straight into your first stitch like that. Stitch marker out, chain one. And guess what you're going to do? Make sure that straight, it is straight. I don't even need to check. Yeah, You're going to do what you did with the second row. In fact, all you're doing is repeating this now over here. So we're going to put our half double crochet in there like so. Pop your stitch marker in. Now you know how to do this part. You know, you know, you've done it already. I'll just start you off and then you can head off and do it yourself. So chaining one, you are in there. Yeah, you're skipping the very next stitch. And you're going into the next one with your half double crochets. Chain one, skip that first stitch, go into your next with your half double crochets and so on. Chain one, skip and into the next. All right, I'm not going to sit here and let you watch me do this one. You can head off on your own, do your half double crochets, chain ones all the way, get to your second, I'm sorry, get to your last stitch. Don't complete it because you'll need a space there anyway and I'll meet you there once you're done. Alrighty guys, so here I am at the end of this round. Okay. Alright, I've done my last half double crochet and chain one. And there's my last stitch. We're going to ignore that last stitch or skip it if you will. Pop your hook in the stitch with your stitch marker. Pull a loop through and pull it through to the loop on your hook. Remove that stitch marker. Chain one single crochet in the same stitch as your chain one and just pop your stitch marker back in there and then single crochet like we did before in the space your chain space single crochet into the half double crochet that's really tight for me and <laughs> single crochet in your chain space and in your half double and in your chain space all right so continue to do that in the round get to your last half double right here and I'll meet you there once you're done all righty guys so here we are at the end of this round get excited get excited all right so I've done a single crochet in that last half double. I need to do my last single crochet in the chain space. Remember you have one chain space left. And then we slip stitch into the stitch with your stitch marker. Super easy, you know what you're doing now. Take that stitch marker out, pull a loop through like so. Cut your thread and weave in that end. And let's talk instructions. The bonus is you've done what you need to do to make the links in your chains. How gorgeous does it look? I love this. All right. Now, let's say you're making all your chains. Oh, let's bring that out a little bit. <laughs> you're making all your chains and you've done so many chains and you took your yarn with you to go and do some more but you forgot to bring the chains and you've remembered your color combinations. So it goes gold, red, green, white, silver, red, green, white, gold, red, green. You've got your gold at home. So you know, that's the last link. And all you need is the red, the green and the white left. And you forgot to bring these chains with you. You know, you're going to do a red, don't do the red, do the green and the white. This is only if you've left it at home. Do the green and the white. When you come back home, you start your red, you make it, you loop it around here. And at the same time, you can loop it around the green when you've done your chains. We can do it now quickly, real quickly. All right, so start your red. This is only if you've forgotten it, yeah? So you're chaining one, two, three, four, five. Twenty-nine, thirty, and there you go. So let's say you want to do attach your green to your gold, but your red has got to go first. So all you're doing is you're pulling your red through like that. 
and then pull it through the green as well. This is only if you have done these two and you haven't and you've left this at home, right? No point not doing your two um, or your next colours if you think you've missed one, all right? Just add that one later so you attach your green and your gold together with the red, like so. <laughs> In that very first tight stitch <laughs> that you made, don't you love it? She's so naughty. So in the very first tight stitch that you made, pull your loop through like so and pull it through to the loop on your hook, chain one. And what are you going to do? Single crochet in the round. And you're maneuvering around two of them instead of one. Now that's not necessary for you to do that. I just wanted to show you that you can do that. All right. What you need to do now is do every one of your chains, looping them along each link as you go along, attach your red like I shouldn't have just taken it undone. I should have just completed it. But anyway, attach, attach your red. No, attach your red because that's the next color. Red, green, white, gold, red, green, white, silver. So your yours truly is going like this. White, silver, red, green, white, gold, red, green, white, silver, red, green, white, gold, red, green, white, silver. You don't have to do it that way. Red, green, white, gold and so on. Red, green, white, silver. You can do it any ways that you like. All right. So that's pretty much how you do your chains and link them all together. And you can do a full bunting that you can pop across the room in your uh, house for Christmas. You can do them outside near Christmas tree. I'm sorry, let's try that again. Near any tree to make it look like a Christmas uh, decoration. And you can also change colors and not use the tinsel yarn and use it for Easter or use it for uh, some sort of celebration, some birthday or some function that you have as well. All right. So thank you very much for watching us today. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Do all the wonderful things that you do, that you always do anyway. Uh, continue on with your links. Make your bunting as long as you like. And I'll catch everyone uh, in the very next tutorial or on our lives at 4pm Wednesday afternoons, 10am Saturday mornings, Melbourne, Australia time, where we have a lot of fun, way too much fun. Thank you very much for watching and ciao for now.